And welcome back, everybody. Brad Radisi here, and it's time for our Bulldog Conversation. I'm joined by Dr. James Strange, an associate professor of religion here at Samford University. And Dr. Strange, I always love coming and talking to you because we're talking Israel, we're talking digs. And around this time of year, Christmas time as we enter the Christmas season, I know you guys have been unearthing things that, that give us a, a, the best look as we can possibly have into to what Jesus' life was back in his time. Well, that's right, Brad. Uh, we're not digging in any place that Jesus actually lived, but uh, we live in Nazareth, right. where he did grow up. And then we drive out to a little site very close by called Shechin. And by digging sites like Shechin, we can get a picture of what life was like when Jesus was raised in Nazareth and when he did his ministry in the Galilee. And we're learning all kinds of things. For a long time before people started digging, there was an idea that Jesus himself was a peasant. He was talking to peasants. That meant that he was on the bottom rung of society, that people in these villages were very poor. They were always flirting with starvation. Mm -hmm. And through archaeology, we can show that although probably the destitute did exist, it's kind of hard to find them archaeologically, uh, Jesus and his folks were not so horribly well off. If you and I went back in time, we might be surprised at the primitive living conditions, but we can, we can say now that they lived about as well as a lot of people did for their day and age, that they were able to produce a surplus of goods and of produce and to travel long distances to engage in market and, sh and sell that stuff. So uh, not quite the peasants of old, uh, certainly not among the wealthiest rungs of society either. You've been taking Sanford students over there for years. Just give us a little history on where you started and, and wh where you guys are now. E each year you come back with something new. Well, that's true. Uh, in 2009, we took Sanford students to the, a big city called Sepphoris. Mm -hmm. And for 2009 and 2010, we dug there, finished that dig. That was the capital of Galilee during the lifetime of Jesus, very close to Nazareth. And digging that city helped us understand how Jesus probably knew something about cities, not just villages, uh, but also about life with marketplaces and theaters and major crossroads and a little bit more of a cosmopolitan atmosphere. The villages uh, help us discover all kinds of aspects of daily life uh, for just regular folks. So at Shechin, for, ex uh, for example, we've been discovering that they made pottery there. Mm -hmm. Well, we knew that, but we're getting even better evidence of that and evidence that they're selling that pottery from this little bitty village all over the Galilee and sometimes outside of the Galilee. Mm -hmm. Our big surprise at Shechin was that they're making oil lamps there. Huh. For a long time people said they're only making them in cities like Sepphoris and now we can say they might be making them at Sepphoris but they were making a whole lot of them at Shechin mm -hmm. and nobody knew that a village could be the site of a lamp workshop until we started finding it at Shechin. We've talked about your trips for a few years now, and I don't know if I've ever asked you, when did you get the bug to get over there and start unearthing this stuff? Well, it was a long time coming. My father is an archaeologist, and he went to dig for the first time when I was in the first grade. And I remember getting a Polaroid, a black and white Polaroid photograph of him and seeing him for the first time with a beard that he has never shaved off since then. <laughs> and I grew up and went to college and had entirely different career plans until really after I graduated from seminary. Mm -hmm. Had a hard time figuring out exactly what I was going to do. And uh, it took me a couple of years after seminary to figure out it was going to be archaeology. So I started going to dig in Israel with him as an adult mm -hmm. and got lots of training in the field from him and other American and Israeli archaeologists. And finally, when we closed out that dig at Sepphoris in 2010, I said, okay, it's time for a new project. We've been digging in a city. I think it's time to dig a village very close to the city so we learn something about city-village relationships during the time of Jesus, a little bit before, a little bit afterwards, and so we began the Shekin project. How exciting is it to take some of our students out of the classroom and get them in that field and see history, live, live, not living history, but, but history that certainly is found in the ground? It's, it's so important to bring students that I, I'm tempted to say if I couldn't bring students and had to hire workers, I might not engage in archaeology at least annually like I do now. I wouldn't have the urgency to do it. It's one of the most gratifying things to take over students who've never done anything archaeological before and have them 
see the mountain of learning that they have to do uh, once mm -hmm. they get started, and then two weeks in to hear them instructing newcomers to the dig right. and doing it right. And, right. and to realize how quickly they learn the method and they appreciate the method for its importance for helping us get the data out of the ground. If students are interested, how should they get in touch with you? Well, I'm in the, uh, uh, I'm on the email system, so J.R. Strang, that's J-R-S-T-R-A-N-G, at samford.edu. Good deal. All right, Dr. Strange joining us here for the Bulldog Conversation. Folks, we have more coming up right after this on the Samford Sports Network.